Hello and welcome to season two of Travel Stories with Mosh. So if you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then this is the right place for you because here every week I will be talking to some incredible travel enthusiasts who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. Today's intrepid traveler is no ordinary woman. She is a mountain climber, an adventurer, and she is also the first woman to summit all the mountains in the Middle East and the Arabian Peninsula. She is also one of the few individuals to have completed all the seven volcanic summits. Caroline Leon, it is such a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, when I was doing my research about you and what I found so fascinating is your hashtag, which says never stop exploring. (laughs) Is it the love for the world around you that, you know, you never want to kind of stop exploring? You know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to explore Mm -hmm. and particularly to explore the world. I think it expands your sense of consciousness. It expands your view on the world. And then you're able to come back to like a place like Dubai and really appreciate it for what it is and be grounded within it. And so I think it's important to explore. And particularly for me, exploration is medicine. That is so beautiful. But, you know, you got into your exploration and your whole adventure life after something happened to you right and um, you know the whole fact that you went through 14 surgeries and 23 or 24 blood transfusions that that was huge in your life and you you know that happened to you post an accident tell us a little bit about that Um, Back in 2015, I was climbing an outdoor rock climbing wall and uh, stupidly unharnessed. And And this happened in Dubai, right? Yes, yes, Mm -hmm. it happened in Dubai. And as I got to the top of the wall, I remember like I had a a little bit of fear, which Mm -hmm. was not usual to my system. And, uh, and then in my mind really quickly, I was like, how am I going to get down? And as I started to go down about a meter down, the peg that I was holding onto came off and I just plummeted in like a split oh second uh, down to the earth and bang. And uh, my body shattered. Um, my right foot came out of my body. Um, so it had an open fracture. The, um, my whole right pelvis Mm -hmm. had also shattered and because it wasn't connected to the left side of my body anymore it just rose up and it ended up in my rib cage and in pieces Mm -hmm. and then part of my spine exploded and I just remember laying on the floor on the sand and just breathing and trying to trying to really quickly grasp what had happened and at that stage I thought I was okay and Mm. I tried to get up and I I you didn't realize how bad it was yeah I couldn't get up because Mm. I was still awake Mm -hmm. um and then I rolled onto my right side and I will never forget the sound of my pelvis moving dung 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 oh my god and feeling all the bones move separately and I had this like (gasps) oh my god this is when I think shock sets in because you start to see the world very differently. Mm -hmm. Like I could see the blood pooling around my face Mm. and I knew that there was something wrong with my feet because the people around me were like, Mm. uh, like really concerned Mm. about obviously my foot had ruptured through Mm -hmm. the skin and, uh, and yeah, that was it. I mean, doctors almost told you that you will not be able to walk again. Right. And from there on, you went on to become this, adventurer that you are and climbing all these mountains all around the world and you know been to all the continents in the world how did you muster the courage to do all that I mean was it something inside you that told you that you have to do it or was it this whole love of exploration what was it really I think it's a process that unravels very slowly. I just uh, found myself very broken, a very broken person. And the only way that I could set myself like alive again, um, I think a life, Mm -hmm. like that expression Mm -hmm. was to figure out what made me really joyful and happy Mm -hmm. and 
follow steadfast in the pursuit of that. And that's what I've done. That and so amazing. Adventure and travel was yeah. a facet of that and walking. and It was life-giving for you in a way. Yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah. And I think the mountains healed me in a way that I didn't even understand that I needed to be healed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was never something that I chose. It... It just came to you in whatever form it came to you, but it did. I had this this thing that I needed to walk mm. and, and then this just this beautiful journey unraveled um, as a result of it. And that was it. That is so fascinating, Caroline. But what I'm looking forward to now is where will you be taking us on a journey? Well, I guess that's completely up to you. What would you like to know? I'm open to taking you anywhere. Okay, why don't we go to Antarctica? Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> so take us to Antarctica. Yeah, so uh, Antarctica, going to Antarctica was a part of going to the volcanic, completing the volcanic seven summits. Mm -hmm. I um, had to climb the highest volcano in Antarctica mm. and the volcano happens to be in the interior of the continent mm. um, And it's called uh, Mount Sidley. And it's about 4,400 meters, so to speak. Um, and it's it's very, very isolated. It is the most remote and isolated expedition in the world. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's nothing. There's mm. no one there. There's mm -hmm. nothing there. Um, and the closest kind of camp is a Union Glacier, which is a four-hour plane journey away mm -hmm. on the other side the coast of um of antarctica so when i arrived in antarctica we obviously landed very close to union glacier and then we we got a little kind of snow like car so mm -hmm. to speak to union glacier and then we waited there for about four days for the weather on mount sidley to clear and then you get into and this sorry when was this what, what? this was in january of, okay, so it was very cold uh, yeah yeah january of this year mm. it's summer because it's obviously oh, yes, the summer. yes of course yes. it's summer but it's yeah. still minus 30 yeah Yeah. So it's very – minus 30 is the summertime mm -hmm. for Antarctica. So it's very, very cold. You get really, like, seasick. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it's so cold. The airplane is freezing because they're trying to conserve – fuel so mm -hmm. as we're flying over the caldera of this you know ancient volcano in mm -hmm. antarctica and on one side we've got this slope that's just really gradual and it's just snow and blue ice and on the other side you have this open caldera so it's like rock it's like the inside of a crater of the volcano and it's obviously exploded out wow. and it's just black rock and it's so beautiful um in this very scary way yeah yeah um and yeah so we landed a couple of hours away from the volcano um and then we pitched a tent uh just like i think it was eight kilometers which took us about 17 hours to walk oh my um, god pulling a 25 kilo sled And uh, yeah, and then we gradually ascended up the mountain until till summit summit day. But what was it like? I mean, you know, describe because not everyone can go there. You know, it's just we're kind of taking this journey with you. So describe to us how how it looked like. What was the feeling over there? Um, it's. For starters, it's very cold mm. and it doesn't snow because it's too cold to snow. Okay. So it's just, it's very dry, uh, very like, it's more like ice snow. Mm -hmm. Like it's been there a very, mm -hmm. very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more like the sediment of the snow. And it's just it's eerily very beautiful like there's just nothing and because of that the distances are so deceiving like you see a stone and you're like oh that's an hour away and actually it's like 30 kilometers and it takes two days oh, <laughs> like, gosh. it's very the distances are very deceiving yeah. um but it's very 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 beautiful mm -hmm. um you can see as far out to the horizon um and it's just snow and ice everywhere 
uh, and the sun has this very different texture to it. Like you can see this like ice ring around the sun mm-hmm. um, and the sun doesn't ever set. So it just tick tocks across the sky to mm-hmm. one horizon. So it goes like, you know, three o'clock to 10 to three o'clock to 10 o'clock and it never touches the horizon. It doesn't get anywhere near it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's hard to sleep there. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it's just. And very, how long were you there? I was there ten days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. and there's no life around there, right? So you have to carry your own stuff in terms of food, etc. Yeah, you carry everything, and, and in fact, you even carry your poo out. Mm. Yeah, you don't you don't leave anything there. So you poo wow. into these special bags, and they freeze in an instant. So you leave it for an hour, and it's frozen solid, and you just you put it in this in this Ziploc sealed. Um, waste bag and you just leave it on your sled and you take it all the way and you carry back 10 days of poo wow oh my god that's a lot yeah you carry everything everything back everything yeah you don't leave anything Mm. there it has a like leave no trace behind and there are some mountains that have that philosophy if you look at some of the environmental aspects of it um there's a lot of mountains that try and keep the environment as clean as possible. Mm-hmm. And so they have these, yeah, leave no trace behind. So you, you even take your poo. <laughs> yeah, which is a great thing. I mean, yeah. if we don't look after the world, who will? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay, coming to my next question. Um, which is that one place in your life that kind of made you realize uh, that you actually really love travel? I mean, was it a mountain or a place or a city? Anything that kind of, you know, struck with you and you kind of realized that, hey, I, I like this, you know, I love traveling around the world. Yeah, it's probably when I when I was in Iraq, actually. So I flew into Erbil and I remember like I was going to climb this mountain called Halgard, which is one of the highest in Iraq. And, uh, and I was about to meet my guide and he sent me a message and is like, hey, there's something going on on the mountain. We can't go. Why don't you get a hotel and then I will meet you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK, this is a twist. And there's always twists when you travel mm-hmm. and it's yes. about being open to that. So I was like, sure, no problem. I went and found a hotel. And interestingly, in Iraq, the only five-star hotel, because at that stage I was like, I'm going to treat myself. I've been living in a tent for for a month. I'm going to go somewhere nice to sleep in a bed. Yeah, I'm so you happy. Deserve it. Yes. Yeah. And so we found uh, the Ratana. And uh, obviously it's the only five-star hotel in Iraq. So it's full of diplomats. Mm-hmm and ambassadors and you know uh i would say like cia agents mm-hmm. and, and i met the general of the kurdish army and just like story after story yeah. after story after story and mm-hmm. i didn't climb any mountain but the people that i met and the things that i did and it was the conversations just, that you had yeah yes. it was just like i really need to pinch myself because mm-hmm. i just did this mm-hmm. and it was pretty special to be honest so it was like Iraq comes to your mind to to answer that question. Yeah, really. because yeah. what was really beautiful, and this is what I didn't realize when I just started going to every country in the Middle East, that it actually has a lot of a lot of biblical. Uh, history and I'm not overly religious but I do find history fascinating Mm -hmm. and irrespective of what religion Mm -hmm. it is and uh, when I went to Iraq the citadel there has um, it is 5,000 years old it has been the place of Christians and Muslims and Sumerians and Mesopotamians and it's just ancient. And when you go inside it, you can almost picture how ancient this city mm-hmm. is. And uh, when I went to Syria, I climbed this mountain called Mount Hermon and it's one of the areas where apparently Christ appeared to his disciples and he drank from this little pond and you can actually go to the pond and you can drink from wow. it. Um, and some of when I climbed Mount Ararat in Turkey, it is the resting place of Noah's Ark. Yeah, it's very special to actually be to some of these ancient yeah, places. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And that's the beauty of traveling, right? It's not just going to a place. It's the conversations you have. It's the different people you meet, the cultures, the food, the journeys that you have. It's everything together. It's, it's mm. an experience and so much of learning uh, as well. 
But which is your all-time favorite destination and why? Iraq and Antarctica. Antarctica. Because mm -hmm. um, Antarctica, not so much because of the landscape, because mm -hmm. the landscape is very harsh, mm -hmm. but it's more the people that I met there. Like I climbed Mount Sidley with um, one of the first, he was the first Guatemalan man to do the seven summits and to climb Everest. And he was the first man to survive overnight at 8,000 meters, mm -hmm. above 8,000 meters. And uh, he'd climbed Everest. I met three other Everest climbers. I met a woman who'd climbed K2 and Everest. And they these are the people on my team. Mm -hmm. um, so I climbed Sidley with them and got to meet these incredibly ambitious and adventurous people mm -hmm. and it was just it was very special to to be in that kind of environment where you're meeting the world's greatest climbers amazing and iraq like i have never heard anyone say that iraq is one of their favorite destinations yeah and it's very pretty mm. yeah so not very many people will know that right and mm. you went there and explored and then therefore you can say that and what what was it that really struck to you about iraq was it the the history was it the people it's the history and the mm -hmm. people but generally the whole middle east i find people are very hospitable mm -hmm. there's a, a culture of um of being very generous mm -hmm. with their home and time and food and people want you to to like their country and to see it with fresh eyes mm -hmm. and uh, i like that about the middle east um in terms of like the landscape, probably Jordan is the most beautiful. Yeah. Uh, especially the mountains in Jordan, they're just unbelievable. So, but you know, also with traveling, I mean, of course you meet amazing people, of course you go through history, but then we have travel bloopers as well. You know, things happen that sometimes are not so pleasant or we visit a place and we're like, oh, I expected more. So what is that one place or incident that perhaps happened in your traveling life that didn't kind of leave a good taste in your mouth? I have some scary ones, actually. Oh. Um, probably when I went to Peru, my mm -hmm. partner at the time, he uh, got robbed oh. uh, in Lima and was beaten with a baseball bat. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, until they took all his money out of the ATM card and you know in the UA you can set limits yeah uh, so I think they got to the limit and then they just dumped him but yeah so but was he kidnapped or he was yeah yeah just... he was he was kidnapped yeah and how long did that last <laughs> it was uh maybe a couple of hours they basically he was getting into a taxi and uh, they pushed him into the taxi and uh, and drove him to an ATM. And then they asked him to take all his money and he refused. So they hit him with a baseball bat. And uh, then he took out all the money, gave it to them, and mm -hmm. they just drove off. And um, I think about an hour away, they opened the car door and just pushed him out. And oh, my God. So he was left on the side of the road. Was he yeah. hurt? Yeah, he was quite badly hurt, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But that's the thing about South America, right? I mean, you have to be careful. Like, I remember when I went to Brazil, everybody was like, why are you going there? It's such a dangerous country. Mm. But thankfully, nothing happened. I had the most amazing um, trip there. Mm. But these are also important to share, right? I mean, you can always tell people that, you know, this can happen, so you can be careful. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Caroline, I am now really intrigued to know your hidden gem, which is that maybe in a mountain or a different place in the world. Yeah, I have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I think Iran is quite a special place to go to mm -hmm. if you're an off the beaten track type of person. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful part of the but world. Iran is huge, right? It is. And yeah. Tehran, the city and the souks there, it's like the it's just it's a very beautiful place to mm -hmm. see because it's very untouched by western influence mm -hmm. so the food that you eat there and the places that you go everything's so authentically iranian mm -hmm. and it's probably um a place i would recommend i've been to a lot of um most of South America, and I think it's also very special, particularly mm -hmm. going into the the rainforest. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ecuador, I went to the Orient 
uh, rainforest there, which is, you know, on the coast of Peru. And that's very, very beautiful. Mm. I think Oman, you know, it's right yeah. in our backyard. Yeah. Diving there is spectacular. Mm-hmm. The Dominion Islands, um, really beautiful place to visit. And Oman, the people there are just so gracious and humble. Yeah. It's a very, yeah, whale diving in Oman. Really? I've yeah. not heard of whale diving in Oman. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um so you go, I think at this season is May and October. Mm-hmm. It's the the whale sharks. So you can dive with them in May. It's, yeah, very special. Yeah. But Iran is really, um, you know, interesting that you say that because a lot of people only talk about the politics there and don't travel. And that is why, you know, the you say the Western influence is so little there. Mm. And very many people would actually think twice before they go to Iran. But how did you feel? What was your experience like when you went there? Um, look, uh, I have been to many places that mm-hmm. people would say don't, don't go, go to <laughs> like Iraq yeah um and same with Saudi Arabia when I went there for the first time people were like what are you doing in Saudi mm-hmm. Arabia and that was also like a very it's probably another gem too there's a mountain there called uh, Jebel al Sadwa mm-hmm. and it's just on very close to the border of Yemen it's in Abha and the mountain looks like you're in Jurassic Park wow. it's exactly like Jurassic Park and you have this colony of like a hundred baboons that lives there mm-hmm. and so you get really close to the baboons I didn't even know baboons lived in Saudi Arabia um so I didn't know that either until yeah, now <laughs> exactly it's very it's a very very beautiful place mm-hmm. to go to and the hike is like a one day hike yeah when the first time I went to Iran I was very apprehensive about the political situation um but actually what I've come to realize the more that I've been there is um if you follow the rules and the regulations you're very conservative in terms of your attire mm-hmm. like I go in a full hijab mm-hmm. and um a full albaya uh, then I haven't had any problems. Yeah, of so. course, respect the rule of the land, right? And yeah. then you're absolutely fine. So it brings me to my next question now. Uh, so if you could travel around the world in a day, where would you like to have breakfast? Where would you have like to have lunch? And where would you like to have dinner? I would probably do some parts of Central America because I haven't been to mm-hmm. to Panama, Nicaragua, and uh, Belize and Panama. Dinner in Panama. <laughs> okay, that sounds very <laughs> only nice. because I've never been never to those been countries. There. So okay. I'd like to I like to explore new places. That would also be a new kind of an exploration for you, a new yeah. place, new cuisine, and all of that. Yeah. Okay, so let's come back to Dubai a little bit now. And of course, Mm -hmm. we are spoiled for choice over here when it comes to food. Um, The traffic is horrible right now. So if we can get to somewhere, (laughs) where would you like to have breakfast, lunch and dinner here in Dubai? Any place, (laughs) breakfast, lunch and dinner by the ocean is what I would say. Yeah, all all three meals by the ocean. And it doesn't matter where you go. No restaurant recommendations over here. Oh, no. I unfortunately am too simple for that. I can... No, you get simple food by the ocean as well. I mean, you can just have a shawarma. It doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. Kite Beach somewhere is is probably nice. So Caroline's not giving anything. We're going to Kite Beach with her. (laughs) She's an explorer. She just likes the mountains. (laughs) But okay, now because you like adventure and because you like exploration and um, tell us about uh, an experience here in the UAE or Dubai, Um, you explore around the region as well, but specifically we want to know about an experience that you would highly recommend um, here in the UAE. Mm. I like um, spending time before the summer, I spent a lot of time in Amal Quain. Mm-hmm. So Amal Quain now has a new, um, like, a beach. It's like the kite can, beach, yeah, right? Kite yeah, kite beach, yeah. yeah, that you can take your dogs to. Yeah. So I like going there because I like my dogs being free and being able to, like, get mm-hmm. in the ocean. So I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, I take them to the mangroves, which is really close, mm-hmm. and go kayaking there. And the dogs can also go too, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. I also really enjoy going to Fajera and going diving. I think it's very beautiful and special there too. Mm-hmm. Martini Rock, um, great diving spot. 
up in Musandam. I know that this is Oman, but mm-hmm. it's the diving there is beautiful too. Uh, going on a hot air balloon along the desert. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty special too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, anything really in the ocean. And outdoorsy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know a little bit about the mangrove um experience in Omal Quinn. You can drive straight to the mangroves. Okay. Um, and uh, then there's a restaurant there called Mikoko. Mm-hmm. And uh, from Mikoko, you can you can have breakfast, lunch or dinner there. You can go across. Uh, they have a, a beach there that's along the mangroves and you can hire kayaks and uh, paddle boards and everything else. And then you can you can go up. Yeah, like along the mangroves. Mikoko, it's really, okay. Yeah. Right, now we have all these various experiences that I'm sure I'm looking forward to experience. But tell me now, what is next on your bucket list? Um, so there was something that I was so interested in doing, and it's going to see the gorillas in Uganda. Mm. Next year, we're going to the gorillas, the chimpanzees, and going to a safari experience How of fantastic. Uganda, climbing a volcano there. And I think it's so special because you know wildlife is so precious yeah, and absolutely. when you think about how many gorillas are left in the mm-hmm. wild there's only 900 mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. left in yeah. the wild yeah. um so that's one that i'm really looking forward to obviously going to everest base camp mm-hmm. and then personally there's uh, you know a couple other mountains that are on my list. on my personal yeah mountain list mm-hmm. that i i want to do and if i'm fortunate enough in this lifetime to get the opportunity to do that then You know, why not? Yeah, I'm sure you will. And I wish you all the best. And I hope you keep climbing mountains and all the mountains that you want to all around in the world. But thank you so much for this, Caroline. You are such an inspiration. And I wish you all the best. But um, if people want to find you or climb a mountain with you, where can they find you? Caroline.d.leon. That's on Instagram. And if they want to come climb a mountain with me, then they can go to Summit Expeditions. And so that Instagram account is (laughs) summit.exped. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Caroline. I'm looking forward to climbing a mountain with you soon. Yeah, you should come along. (laughs) Yeah, I will. I will. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and to leave us a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you thought about today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring.